Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna show you three different tips about texturing inside Blender. So let's check it out. All right, so before we get into Blender, uh, you know, these, these three things are things that I always most likely will be using them every time I'm doing any sort of texturing inside Blender. And so I think these are uh, sort of like this, you know, hidden gems that you can also apply to your quick favorites menu tool uh, inside Blender. So let's take a look at the first one here. Now, the first one, uh, I am going to, let's take a look at this plane here. And what I have here is a tileable wood texture, right? And so tileable means that if I repeat it on any axis, whether it's to the left or right, up and down, you will not see the seam of the difference in your in your texture. So for example, let's just say that I put an array in this in this um, in this particular plane here, I can duplicate this, right? And you can see that it sort of flows very nicely into uh, into the distance. So uh, that's what a tileable texture is. Now, a lot of the times we have, let's say, for example, a plane like this, and we want to fit it maybe in a place that is a little bit bigger or smaller than the actual plane. But what happens is that if I duplicate this, for example, right, and I need to, and I need to make this bigger to fit a space you're gonna see that the texture itself, uh, you know, gets bigger, right? And so let's go back here. And so if I try to do this in edit mode, right? And I scale this, or I scale this this way, or this way, it does the same thing, right? And so if I need to do something like this, you're gonna see that it gets stretched out. And that's something that we don't really want for our textures because it changes the scale of the texture. And if you change the scale of the texture, then the scale overall might start, you know, giving mixed signals and be a little bit more confusing. So we always want to try to keep the scale of the texture intact. Um, and so a great way to do this without the stretching of the texture is that if you press N for your side uh, menu here, Let's go to view here. And if you go into edit mode, uh, let's go to tools, options. You're going to see, let me stretch this a little bit. This options transform correct face attributes button here. Now, right now it's off, right? And so if I try to stretch it, this happens. And so if I click this on and I stretch it, you're going to see that it keeps the sort of UVs intact but it's also using the tileable texture to um, add to the new areas of, of the scaling, which is great, right? Because we don't, now we don't need to, you know, we keep the texture the same, uh, but we can make this in any shape or form, right? So for example, I can come in here and uh, maybe I can extrude this up, maybe extrude this to the side. I can even uh, move this, in any direction to create a shape. Maybe it could be like a circular shape or whatever, but the texture still stays the same, which is great. Uh, you can only do this as in a tileable texture, but uh, this is a great way for, uh, for doing this. Now, number two, let's take a look at these uh, assets here. Now, I have set up here a uh, on this set of stone arches texture. I have set up, if you can see here on the right bottom, uh, this set of group nodes here, this one's here, that will give me the sort of moss effect on top of the uh, stone here. Now, you don't have to make this particular effect, but sometimes you make some sort of node setup in Blender. And when you create that no setup, you want to apply that no setup to the rest of the assets, right? So maybe like a treatment or some sort of effect, um, or you know whatever the case may be. But uh, you want to you want to try to duplicate this into uh, the rest of the assets. So for example, if I want to have this effect on this asset or uh, multiple assets, uh, we can do it in a way. So what I'm going to do is I have separated the main texture, which is my stone texture, which is this here. And then this here is going to be my 
moss setup. And this is a very simple setup, right? I have a texture coordinate on normal, separate X, Y, and Z. The C goes to a color ramp to play with the um, sort of contrast of the placement of this moss, right? So if I want it more or less, I can, I can play with that. And so once I set that up, I can grab all these and press control G to make a group. Now a group in here, you're going to see that you're going to have a group input and a group output, right? And in order for us to get out or in the group, you press tab, right? So now we're back to the original area and you can see this note here, which is our actual group, right? No group. And if I press tab while I have it selected, I go inside that group and then I can see the actual no setup. So tap in and out, very simple. And now this group, if I press N for my side menu here and let's go into node, I go into properties and I change the name of the no group. So we're going to call this moss treatment. So that's the name of our group, right? Moss treatment. We can see it there and we can always, if we need to make changes or change the colors, maybe we want instead of uh, moss, maybe we want some uh, dust, right? So maybe we can make a little bit more dusty or maybe we want some, I don't know, some snow maybe, right? We can always go back in here and change that. But now with the group, we have most treatment. And once I have that, now I can go to any of the assets, right? So let's say I go into asset and if I want to apply this treatment to this, all I need to do is shift A to create something new, go to group, moss treatment, and this I'm going to put right at the end here. And then now that's going to apply the, um, the effect to my, to my asset. If I want it on this one again, shift a group, moss treatment, put that on top and then I will get that in here. Right? So again, very easy. Once you set it up, you can apply it to any of the other assets that easily. Now the third and final tip will be, we're going to take a look at this weird looking box is, you know, a lot of the times when you're modeling things very boxy like this, um, again, this, this is nothing here, but, um, you might, you might find a place or a model that, that, that is, uh, similar to this very boxy. And I use the same texture that I have here, right. To extrude it, but I want to be able to have all these sides, right? That look all stretched to have that same texture. And so normally what I would do is, um, let me take out the moss treatment here, just so we can see a little bit better, right? And a lot of the times, you know, the way I would do this is I would just grab, you know, these faces here, for example, and this ones, and then maybe go to the front view here, press U, and then uh, go to project from view. Right. And I can either go to my UV editor and sort of scale this to match the scale, right? Oops, in here to match the scale, right? And so once I get that, then I go back, grab this ones like that, and then go to the side and do the same process all over around, right? To the top to the bottom, to the back, et cetera, et cetera. And so as you saw here, I was selecting all these faces, you know, one by one, and I can sort of like drag, but a lot of times you have models on the top, you know, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to click and drag things. And so a great way to uh, select some of these is that you can go into, for example, I can select these two, which are pretty much looking in opposite directions directly. And I can go into select similar normal. And what that does is kind of select all the faces that will share the same normals as the ones that I had selected. And so now I can go to the front project from view and boom. And so I can, of course, play with the size there and I can just select one. And what I did was this select similar normal, I right clicked on it and I add it to my quick favorites. So I don't need to do all this every single time. So I can just select one, press Q and then normal, and then it will select all my normals here. And then the same thing here, right? 
And now I can go to the top view, break from view, and then fix the scale here. And same with this one. So just select one normal, one normal, go to the side, view, project from view, and then fix the scale of this, right? So as you can see, very easy to select those faces that share the same normal. And so that's a, a very quick way uh, to do that. All right, guys. So that's it for today's episode. Uh, I really hope that this tips gives you a little bit of a, a good idea how maybe you can save a little bit of time while you're uh, doing some texturing in Blender. And so if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next video.